welcome to the Astro Imaging Journey channel. Please enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. So now it's time to integrate our images. So let's open up the next process icon. And it keeps wanting to do that for me. Okay. So we've got image integration process. And I did change a few of these, so feel free to uh, pause the video, write down what they were. Uh, combination is average. Uh, additive with scaling for normalization. We shouldn't have to do that, but uh, that's what I have it set for. Uh, oh, yep, because we're using our normalization files. Uh, we do have weightings. We need to use the fits keyword and the keyword we assigned in the subframe selector process. We want to generate an integrated image. Uh, I'm not going to be doing drizzle data this time, or a drizzled Im image this time but I will generate it anyways. Uh, let's see, pedestals, evaluate noise. And okay, so the next thing we want to look at is pixel rejection. So again, we do the, put your mouse over it and it gives us our little tool tip uh, all of my narrowband filters are 16 total exposures, and all of my, uh, not broadband, but broader band, uh, as I prefer to call it, are 36 exposures. So Windsorized Sigma clipping is a good one to use for the narrowband since that is 16. And if we go through here, I mean, we could use linear fit. Uh, that's for large sets of at least 15, five minimum. Uh, and then for RGB and luminance, we're gonna use the generalized extreme studentized deviate or ESD test. Uh, that is for 25 or more images, preferably 50 or more, but uh, we will use that one for those more than likely. So, uh, clip high and low. Uh, normalization is local. And that should be it. Yep, that should be it. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to clear out the existing files, add my new ones, go up to our blue. So we have, let me cancel that real quick. So right now we have lens rise sigma clipping. So let's do our narrow bands. We're going to go to each alpha, select them all, should have 16, we do. We're going to add in our local normalization, add in our drizzle, and then H alpha, we need to find our reference frames, so we're looking at uh, 920 to 30 degrees, 920, and that is 204923, 204923, and we'll highlight it and do a set reference, and it moves it up to the top. 
that is our reference image. Otherwise, it just takes the top file and that is not our best frame. So at this point, we can apply global. And we'll be back when this is complete. All right, that has completed. So let's, uh, I do not want to do that. There we go. I'm just going to send it over to Workspace 2 for now. So we can look at it. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Stretch it. Still got some of that amp glow in there. Uh, but overall, looks pretty decent. We had uh, me control shift and zoom in on this area. We had those hot pixels. Looks like those were removed pretty good. Um, we got a little black on the side, but that's from the star alignment process, so we're good there. Um, we can deal with the amp glow later. Um, All right, maybe I need, man, my dark should be okay. Maybe I need to start using dark flats, but for now, I will leave it be. So let me unstretch, minimize it. I'm going to rename it as H alpha. I'm just going to put that up here for now. Go back to workspace one, rinse and repeat for my next narrowband, which is hydrogen beta. And we'll just go through this real quick. Reference is 920 223. 920 223. Set reference. We're still windsorized. We'll apply global. We'll be back when this is complete. All right, that is completed. So let me push that over to Workspace 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and, whoops, did not mean to double click. I'm just going to come over here. I can either uh, right click and do the modifier. So the last time I minimized it and edited the modifier here, I can edit it right here or I can just go to my tab, double click on it, and name it accordingly. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna minimize it. I'm going to trust that each one will work. So let me finish up the uh, O3 and S2, and then we'll be back for the blue filter. All right, so we're back. We've got all four of our narrow band filters completed. So now we're gonna come over here and do our uh, broader band. So let me go up here, let's look at uh, red. I'm gonna start from the bottom this time, uh, just to change things up. So there's my red, add in my local normalization. Add in my drizzle. And I need to find my reference, which is red 30, 919. And that is 224038. 
that one right there, click set reference. And here we're going to change this. So that's one of the reasons why I did all my narrow band together so that I wouldn't have to constantly be changing this setting. So we'll go back here and we're going to use the generalized extreme studentized deviate uh, test or ESD test. And then, yep, that's the only thing we need to change. So we'll apply global. And then I'm going to rock and roll and get the rest of these done. And that should be it. So I'm going to say thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found something out of it, got something out of this video uh, part here. Uh, as always, clear skies and have a good one. Thanks for watching yet another video from the Astro Engine Junior Channel. Really appreciate your viewership. In our upper right, we have the latest video we've uploaded. In our lower right, we have what YouTube might think you would enjoy. And in the lower left is our subscription button. Please like this video, subscribe if you so choose. As always, clear skies, have a good one, and remember Duke.